when you're insulin resistant, that is you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this video, we look at mannose. Mannose levels are up in someone who is insulin resistant. This probably is not a big surprise since mannose, like glucose, is a six carbon sugar. But unlike glucose, whose levels are up, both when the person has eaten nothing, that is, they're fasted, as well as when the person eats, mannose is only up after a meal. And no, although it is possible to consume small quantities of mannose during a meal, the mannose flitting about is actually homegrown, meaning the body is making it from glucose. But it's not the glucose being eaten. It's the glucose being made by the liver. The process is known as gluconeogenesis. The liver is quite a whiz. It can turn a whole host of things into glucose. This is something the liver pretty much does 24-7. It has to. If supplies of glucose dip below an acceptable threshold, well, it's tickets. Now, the only time the liver takes a break from whipping up batches of sugar is when sugar is coming in, courtesy of a meal. Now, the way the liver knows it's siesta time is insulin tells him. It's not a matter of insulin being courteous. Insulin is striving to be efficient. Putting away homegrown and eaten sugar at the same time is seriously hard work. In the insulin resistance, the liver doesn't get the memo that a load of sugar has been received tiniestly, so he doesn't stop cooking up riddles of glucose. And he and everyone else ultimately suffer because insulin fails to keep up with his sugar deliveries. So more glucose means more mannose. Now, mannose is not a fuel source. It's actually used for decorating. I kid you not. Lots of bits and pieces in the body put on sugar makeup. They do it to let everyone know they're part of the tribe. The right decorations impact how the various bits and pieces are treated. The official process of sugar decorating is referred to as glycosylation. It's driven by specialized enzymes and it is all very civilized. And mannose is one of the chief sugars used in the decorating process. So the extra mannose, which is found in someone who is insulin resistant, is put to good use. Mm, up to a point. Mannose really likes decorating. So if she finds herself just hanging around, she sometimes does a little self-decorating. That is, she sticks herself onto bits and pieces unprompted. The process is referred to as non-enzymatic glycation. Unfortunately, this decorating is not always aesthetically pleasing. It can be downright destructive. The decorating mess is referred to as advanced glycation in products, or abbreviated AGES for short. The victims of these unsolicited decorations are pariahs. They usually can't do their job and they spark the wrath of the immune system. Ages are believed to be responsible for many of the complications associated with high sugar levels. Now, mannose is not the only sugar that goes decorating unescorted. Glucose does this too. Mannose is just more likely to do so. Now, there's not much you can do to stop mannose from decorating. So here are some decorating tips. You want to keep those glucose levels as low as possible, especially at dinner. Following a low-carb or slow-carb diet cuts insulin some slack. It's way easier to put away small amounts of sugar than truckloads. 
You may be asking, what about manos for urinary tract infections? Well, the science suggests it does work, in the short term at least. It turns out E. coli, this is one of the species of bacteria that likes to get up to mischief in your bladder, uses a mannose sugar to hold onto your bladder. When you swallow mannose as a supplement, most of it gets peed out. This means that the mannose levels are higher than normal inside the bladder. Since E. coli doesn't have 20-20 vision, it grabs onto the wrong sugar and gets swished out, protecting you from a UTI. That said, you might still be at risk of mannose doing dangerous decorating. At this stage, no one has actually studied it, so tread carefully. Here are a few of the references I've used to tell the manos story. Know someone who's pre-diabetic or has type 2 diabetes? Share this video with them so they can begin to look at their condition from a systems perspective. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of the ups and downs of insulin resistance. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.